Welcome to the tutorial using GRASS in QGIS. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to load GRASS data into QGIS and compute, run GRASS modules to compute, for example, landform classes. Now, why would we want to run GRASS in QGIS? Well, GRASS has an extensive library for spatial and temporal computation. It has over 500 modules for spatiotemporal analysis. It excels at raster operations and terrain analysis, for example. So in this tutorial, we're going to use the module r.geomorphon to automatically classify landform categories from a digital elevation model. And we're going to do this in QGIS. Now, QGIS has a sleek, modern user interface. It looks great and it's easy to use. So, QGIS has an integration for GRASS. We can load GRASS data sets in QGIS. We can run GRASS tools in QGIS and on GRASS data. And we can also run a subset of GRASS algorithms on any data set loaded into QGIS. So with the in integration for GRASS in QGIS, we can combine the power of both geographic information systems. We can perform sophisticated spatial and temporal calculations using GRASS while having the nice interface and cartographic composition tools available in QGIS, getting the best of both worlds. For this tutorial, you can follow along on my website at baharman.github.io. Look for the in courses, GIS for designers, in the tutorial using GRASS in QGIS. So let's get started. We're going to open up QGIS with GRASS. So QGIS desktop with GRASS. And when QGIS starts, you can start a new project. The first thing we need to do is enable the plugins. In the plugin menu, I'm going to go to manage and install plugins. In the plugins, under installed, there will be GRASS 7 and processing. Make sure you check both of these to activate them. These are core plugins, so they will be installed by default in the QGIS desktop with GRASS version. Make sure you check these so that they're activated. GRASS 7 and processing. The processing plugin enables the processing toolbar. The GRASS plugin enables you to browse and load GRASS data in the browser and run GRASS tools in the GRASS toolbox here. The difference between the GRASS tools and the processing toolbox is the GRASS tools will run on GRASS data sets, that is GRASS map sets inside of GRASS locations. The processing toolbox, the GRASS modules here, these will run on regular data in QGIS, so geotiffs, geopackages, shapefiles, etc. To begin with, we're going to start using 
gra opening grass data, styling it, and then running grass tools to create some new maps. So to get started, download and extract the Governor's Island data set for GrassGIS. Move this into a folder on your computer called Grass Data. Now, browse in the browser to find your Grass Data folder. Mine is in my D drive. And inside of it, you'll see regular directories. And you'll see a regular directory called NYSBF Governor's Island. This is the folder inside of, this is the Governor's Island data set for grass. It stands for New York State Plain Feet Governor's Island. Now this is just a regular directory. It's also going to show up as a grass location. You'll see the grass icon, and you'll see a duplicate of it. Here, NYSPF, Governor's Island, with the grass icon. If you expand it, you'll see the permanent map set. To load this, you can right-click and go Open Map Set. This is going to open the location and the map set. If I expand the map set, I can add data from it. Let's start by adding the vector map shoreline. It's going to show up as a database, and inside of it there it is both an outline and a fill, an area. I'll click on the area and just hit OK. The projection is going to become EPSG 2263, so North American Datum of 1983, New York, Long Island, State Plain feet as the coordinate system in US survey feet. Now let's style shoreline. Double click on it to go to symbology. And I'm gonna click on simple fill, change the fill color to transparent and set a stroke color and stroke weight. Now let's go ahead and add a raster map. I'm going to add elevation 2017 from the Governor's Island permanent map set. I'll double click here on elevation to add it. And right now nothing shows up. We need to style it first. I'm going to double click on it and bring up the symbology menu. To load the data, I need to click here on Load Color Map from Band, this reload symbol, and it's going to populate the values. It's in Viridis right now, and I hit Apply, the color table will show up. If I want to change the color table, I can pick a color ramp. I've added two custom color ramps, Elevation and Schwarzwald, the Black Forest. Let's see how to add one of these. To, to add a new color map beyond the defaults, we can go to Create New Color Ramp. It's going to ask to select what sort. I can pick from these catalogs. There's the Color Brewer catalog and the CPT City catalog. The CPT City catalog includes the QGIS and grass color table. So I could, for example, use this to pick the elevation color table from grass. Or I could find some other nice color table. So hit OK. And it's going to open a browser to select color tables. There's a list of all of them. If I browse through QGIS, for example, I'll find the grass color tables, and I could pick the elevation color table for grass right here. 
Another option is in the topography color ramps. There's a lot of great choices here, including the elevation color table again. I might pick this Wiki Schwarzwald continuous right here. To apply it now, I'd hit apply. And we see a nice color table. We want to edit the range of values on this. We can do that here under min max settings. Here, you might pick, for example, min max. We'll set accuracy to actual, apply, classify, and apply, and we'll get a new range of values. You can try some of the other options like cumulative count cut and mean standard deviation. So now we've styled the raster. Let's go ahead and add hill shading to this as well. There's easy ways to make hill shading and contours here in QGIS. Rather than having in grass, we would run another module, r.contour, r.relief. Here in QGIS, we can duplicate the layer, elevation 2017. Here's our duplicate. I'm going to rename it. I'm going to call this um, Hillshade 2017. I'm going to move it above elevation, turn it on, and double click to turn on the styling to open up this um, symbology menu. Here in the symbology menu, I'm going to pick the render type. I'm going to change it from single band pseudo color which is what I use for the elevation map, and I'm going to pick hill shade instead. I have options for the altitude and azimuth. We could adjust those. The Z factor, so that will increase the vertical exaggeration. I'll go ahead and hit OK, apply, so we can see the result. There's our hill shade. If I increase the Z factor, and apply, it's going to increase the vertical exaggeration. Give, give the uh, hill shade more pop. There's a multi-directional option. It gives us a multi-directional hill shade. This can bring out some of the micro topography better. We can also for example, adjust the azimuth if I move it here, for example, to around 136, the hill shade is going to show up on the other side. For some people, that will make the landforms seem inverted, like they're sinking into the ground. This is an issue of perception. Now, we want to blend this with the elevation map beneath it. We can use the blending modes down here. So I'm going to change the blending mode, for example, to overlay or soft light. Now we can see it nicely overlaid with the elevation map beneath it. You can adjust settings like brightness, saturation, and contrast here. Now, Let's look at the grass tools. If we want to compute something, use one of the grass modules to compute something new using the grass 
elevation raster. We can do that here with the grass tools. To do this, we first have to have opened a map set. As best practice in grass, you generally don't want to compute something new and permanent. You usually keep this map set as a place to um, store your reference data. So here in the Governor's Island location, I'm going to create a new map set. So I'll right click on Governor's Island, new map set, and I'm going to call this, for example, tutorial. The new map set shows up here. It's of course empty. I'm going to right click on it, open map set. So I'm going to switch from the permanent map set to the tutorial map set. Now, you always have access to your permanent map set in Grass with its with the reference data. Now, when I create new data, it's going to go into the tutorial map set. So here in Grass tools, now that I have a map set open, I can access modules from Grass. And I can also set the computational region, which limits raster operations. I can change the region either here under modules, region settings, and using, for example, g.region, I can set it to a raster map like elevation 2017. run that and it will set the region to this map. If I want to set it to a specific area on the map, I can use the region tab here instead. If I select the extent by dragging on the canvas this button, I can now drag here on the canvas and select a smaller area of my map, for example. If I don't like it, I can just draw again, get exactly what I want and hit apply, you'll see this red bounding box is now around what I drew. This red box represents the computation, the extent of the computational region. Here is the resolution for the region. It should be about one by one. Now we're ready to run a module. So I'm going to go to the grass tools module raster tools and spatial analysis. And here I'm going to pick terrain analysis, scroll down to the module r.geomorphon. This module will automatically classify landforms, basic types of landforms like peak, depression, slope, ridge, valley, foot slope, spur, and hollow. So once I've opened the module, it shows up as a third tab. I have the options. So I'm going to select the input map, input elevation map, elevation 2017. So this is the digital elevation model that I'm going to run the module on. The output is going to be the common landforms. So I can call this map, for example, landforms 2017 or geomorphons 2017. The outer search radius, I'm going to set this to 36. The inner search radius, I'll set to 6. The flatness, I'll set to 12 degrees. And the flatness distance, I'll set to 0. For a more in-depth tutorial on landform analysis in grass, please see my tutorial geomorphometry in grass on my website and on YouTube. So we've set this up and we're ready to run the module. I'll hit run and it's going to compute. The output is going to be saved directly into the tutorial map set as a raster. We can zoom in on our region here. We 
we see the progress of the module. When it finishes, Landforms is added here, is added here inside of the tutorial map set. I'm going to double click on it to add it to the layer manager. Now, the landforms map doesn't show up yet because we need to adjust the symbology. I'm going to double click on it. And in the symbology tab, I need to, again, load the color map from the band. I'm going to set the render type to palleted unique values, because this is categorical data, from 1 to 11. So apply, hit OK. And I can see the landforms that I've computed. And they've been limited to my computational region, this red bounding box that I drew. The region is going to limit all raster operations to its extent. The region also sets the resolution of the analysis. So I can close the r.geomorphons tab here. I'm going to go back to modules, and now I'll run a shaded relief. So still here in the terrain analysis tools, I'm going to go up here and pick r.relief. The input map will once again be elevation 2017. So we're going to compute the shaded relief for the map elevation 2017. The output, I'll call this relief 2017. And I have options to adjust the altitude, azimuth, and the vertical exaggeration. Set it to 2, for example, and run the module. Now, the module should show up here in tutorial, so I'll refresh, and you'll see the map, Relief 2017. If it doesn't automatically show up in the map set, just hit refresh here in the browser. I'll double click to add it to my layer and my map display. And it, once again, you can see that it doesn't render immediately. I'll double click on it to get the symbology. Um, I can set this to single band pseudo color or single band gray. Start with seats. I can, if I go to single band pseudo color, I can load the color map from the band. If I go to single band gray, just apply. We can see the hill shade now. To blend this with the landform layer, we'll go to the symbology and look at um, color rendering blending mode. I'm going to set this, for example, to screen or multiply. set it to multiply this time and I'm going to set the con brightness to 100 contrast to 25 and apply and I have a nice hillshade effect so that's a brief introduction to using the um, grass data and grass tools in QGIS. Now, if we want to work primarily in QGIS using other data sets, so geotiffs, shapefiles, geopackages, and so forth, I can, instead of using the GRASS tools, I would use the GRASS algorithms here in the processing toolbox. So to do that, um, 
we can close this map, create a new project, and we're going to load the Governor's Island data set for QGIS. So I can go project, new. Go ahead and download this data set, Governor's Island data set for QGIS. This contains a .qz, .qgz QGIS project and a geo package. I'm going to download it and put it in my GIS data folder. So here in my data folder, I've extracted the data set and I have the Governor's Island project .qgz. I have the Governor's Island geo package containing the data. So at this point, you can either add some of the maps from the geo package, or you can open up the project. So here we have the elevation map turned on, and we've also added the elevation map as a hillshade on top. So let's go ahead and compute um, the geomorphons using the grass algorithms here in the processing toolbox on this data inside of a geo package. In the processing toolbox, expand grass, you'll find raster tools. And these are organized alphabetically, so I'll scroll down. Find r.geomorphon. Open this up, and I'll pick the input elevation map as elevation 2017. The outer search radius will be 36. The inner search radius, 6. Flatness threshold, 12 degrees. Flatness distance, 0. We can go ahead and just save this to a temporary file, and that'll be called most common geomorph geomorphic forms by default. Um, the extent by default should be the extent of the raster here. You can hit run. When we compute this for the whole governor's island, it's going to take about 180 seconds. So I'll just show you the result here. And it will compute the landforms, just like we did using grass tools. Now, as a closing note, let's talk about which workflow is right for you. If you like to work primarily in QGIS and you just may occasionally want to use some of the GRASS algorithms, then this latter workflow is probably best. Work as usual in QGIS, make, a, make your QGIS project, maybe save your data into a geo package, and then Whenever you want to use GRASS, you can just access modules through the GRASS processing toolbox. Now, if you're a GRASS expert, you may want to actually work entirely within GRASS for your computation. And then when you finally are getting to the end of a project, you may want to Instead, open up a grass map set. And work 
in QGIS to load map layers and create nice cartography with the print layout to export high resolution maps. Another workflow might be to run grass entirely within QGIS. So open your grass data set here in QGIS and run all the modules using grass tools, taking advantage of the nice QGIS interface and also the cartographic tools here with the print layout. So how you use grass in QGIS really depends on your preferences, but you can have a very efficient workflow harnessing powerful algorithms from grass with the user interface and cartographic composition tools here in QGIS. Thank you for listening.